Hello everyone, welcome back to another ChatGPT video. In this one, we're going to talk about academic dishonesty, plagiarism, and how professors, students, and even bystanders are dealing with this. As you guys know, you know, academic dishonesty and plagiarism has been around as long as there's been <laughs> institutions of higher learning. However, with the release of ChatGPT there just a month ago or so, it has really escalated across all all sorts of high schools and in universe, university, pardon me, and college campuses. It's getting out of hand. And the reason why is ChatGPT is basically a robot. It's an AI robot that you can speak to for free that's been trained on all of the content on the internet up until the end of 2021. It is in no way perfect. It makes lots of mistakes. If you ask it the same question in different ways, it'll occasionally give you the wrong answer or a different answer. It is known to hallucinate a bit where it gives you multiple uh, responses and one of them isn't correct or both of them aren't correct, etc. It is not perfect, but it's really damn good. For those of you that don't know what ChatGPT is, it's a generative pre-training transformer, which is a really fancy word of, like I said, an AI robot that pretty much knows everything. That said, it's turning the ups it's turning the academic world upside down, as I alluded to. And here's the thing: teachers, uh, professors, teachers are trying to find ways to combat it. So, as are you know, various campuses, etc. It's top of the mind. It, it's a big thing. And you know, before I go into a couple ideas, if you are a teacher or a dean or a professor or anything like that and you're combating it, I am interested if you leave a comment below as to how you're handling it and what your experience is with ChatGPT so far. That said, I'm going to give you a few ideas and I'm going to give you a few examples of what people are doing. So if you're a student, this is what you can expect. And if you're a professor or, or a teacher, for example, these are some ideas you might want to try out in your classroom. The first one is by Anthony Omen. He's a professor of philosophy at Northern Michigan University. And uh, here's what happened. Just a, a little while ago, one of his students submitted a paper, and the paper was incredible. It was the best in the class, and from what I can gather from the New York Times Magazine, uh, Kelly Huang wrote it, uh, so credit to her. This paper was like miles above everything else. It was it was incredibly written, well argued, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyways, long story short, Aunt, uh, Mr. Omen, uh, Professor Omen, uh, approached the student and said, hey, this is really, really good. What's the deal here? The red flags went up, so to speak. And anyways, he ended up, or she ended up, pardon me, I don't know for sure. Uh, could have been a, a lady or a man, probably a female if you go by statistics. But either way, the, the student admitted to using chat GPT. And again, I don't know what the punishment was, if anything, but it led to Mr. Omen changing the way he does his classes. Now, students are required to write first drafts in the classroom. You can't just get your, you know, get your essay question and take it home and then write it with the bot. Now you write it in class. This is one of the ways that he's combating it. This is one of many, and again, I want your opinion on it, but yeah, you, you write it in class and he uses monitors that browse and restrict computer activity. So there's no real funny business going on. Better yet, later drafts, for the later drafts, students have to explain each of their revisions. It's not enough to submit the revision. You now have to basically explain it. Kind of like a, if you were getting a doctoral, <laughs> if you were doing your doctoral thesis and you had to, you know, do your little bit where you have to discuss it and explain it to the proctors or whatever it is. Um, it's, it's kind of getting to that stage now. Um, another thing he mentioned is he's considering having students run chat GPT answers. So use it to get answers and then take those answers and discuss those answers, pick them apart, even doing that in class. So you're kind of like accepted that, you know, chat GPT is here, it's not going away, and it probably won't. In fact, I guarantee it won't. So you just have to, you know, move with the times. So that's just one example. Other professors are redesigning their courses to include things like more oral exams. So instead of just, you know, again, doing your homework at home, you're going to be doing a lot of uh, oral exams. So you have to really explain your reasoning, which really is kind of what, you know, <laughs> school's all about. It's not about getting the right answer. It's about your reasoning. It's ex explaining yourself. Uh, also, professors are looking at doing more group work and handwritten assessments. I'm assuming those are going to be in class, a lot of them. 
And yeah, writing first drafts in class, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different things in the in the pipeline that you can expect as a student. Um, the days of basically the days of take home exams and take home assignments are probably going the way of the dodo. So don't expect too much of that in the future. That said, you're a student. What are you experience? If you are a student, what do you experience on campus right now, or in school, or high school? If you're at high school, what are they doing to you know to combat academic plagiarism? If you're if you're a professor or a teacher, or a dean, or anything like that, a principal, how are you handling it? Some universities and colleges and high schools are are banning it on campus, but that's not going to work because you can always just set up a, high, a hotspot on your iPhone and get right around it. So again, interested in your comments. Academic Academia is changing the way people are graded, the expectations, it's all changing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be back soon.